and welcome to GMBN Tech. Today is an Ask Show, which means if you've used hashtag Ask GMBN Tech down in the comments of any of our videos, then myself or Isaac or one of the other presenters can pick it up and answer it for you. So let's dive straight in. I've got a first question here from Ride Bikes Be Happy, who says fork offset still confuses me. I know it exists, but what the actual F does it do? I brought a Kona Remote 160 a few years back. Uh, with a 51 millimeter offset Lyric and then wanted a Zeb, which came with 44 millimeters. The bike felt better, but I don't know if that's just because it's a better fork. What's the deal? Uh, well, let me take you over to a bike and I'll explain that to you. Back in a minute, Isaac. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I've got Blake's home build here. And as you can see, he's got some RockShox domain forks on here and it does have an offset. We know that because the axle isn't directly in the center or the bottom of the forks, uh, like some old vintage forks, for example, or some BMX forks that are straight down, no offset. So all it is, is basically measuring that distance between the center of the bottom of the forks and the center of the axle. Uh, and the offset is measured perpendicular to the forks, which is actually our steering axis, because that's the point where you steer, obviously. Now, if we were to draw a line from the center of the axle down to the bottom of the wheel, that is effectively our tire contact patch, because obviously the axle is at the center of the wheel and that is where it's gonna contact the ground. Now, if we were to draw another line from the forks all the way down and carry on to the ground as well, those will cross over at some point and they will create this uh, measurement at the bottom on the ground, if, like effectively, uh, which is called trail. Now, if we were to measure that distance um, in an angle perpendicular to the steering axis, that is mechanical trail. Now, offsets kind of came about when wheel sizes started to get bigger um, because it's trying to counteract the trail changing as the wheel sizes get bigger. So if we get two lines here, you can see the axle down to the contact patch and then the steering axis over here gives us the trail at the bottom. Now, if we were to increase offset, to move this axle further away, it actually brings those two points in closer together. So you shorten the trail. If you were to shorten the offset, then you move those two points apart. So you increase the trail. Now there are other things that do this naturally. If you were to slacken your head angle, uh, for example, if I make a really exaggerated movement here, then that point will get further away and that will also increase trail. If you were to have the same offset and the same uh, head angle and steering axis here, but the wheels get bigger, then you can see these points get further and further away as the wheels get bigger. So naturally, trail also increases as the wheel size increases. So as wheel size started to get bigger, we received forks that had longer offset because the longer that is, the more those points come in together and you counteract the points getting further away with the bigger wheels. So that's why we have offset. And generally you will find the bigger numbers, say 51 mil, for example, 55, tend to be for 29ers and the 44s or around about that measurement is for 27.5. Now you've talked about uh, changing your forks and I'm going to assume you've kept the uh, length the same, the head angle the same, and the wheel the same, and you've gone for the shorter offset, so you've created effectively a longer trail. Now that is changing certain characteristics on your bike. Um, one of those is to make it feel a lot more stable at speed when the bike is upright, and it does kind of have better leverage over rocks and rough terrain. So that is why you might find that you prefer that uh, feeling with the new forks. However, if you experience a lot of flip-flop with your front wheel, maybe it's a bit of a fight in the steering, some people might want to bring their offset out to lessen that trail and lessen the flip-flop. But 
just like when people muck around with their head angles um, or their wheel sizes or whatever, it is literally you changing a small thing on your bike that might better suit you. So it might not be what the designer had intended with that offset of your original bike, but if you like it, then fine. Uh, maybe it works for you. Uh, I've got a question from Jules Eldridge. Where should you set bike point and lever reach whilst bleeding brakes? Well, uh, Shimano, for example, they specifically indicate to set the factory settings to set up when you're bleeding your brakes. So you have the free stroke all the way in. Uh, so you basically can get as much fluid into the system as you can. You have the largest uh, master cylinder volume and uh, it just allows you to kind of set that brake up from factory. And uh, having the lever reach right out, maybe it gets you, articulate the biggest angle of the lever, work the bubbles out as correctly as possible. So it's kind of setting up from stock Mm. Uh, and then you can dial it to your personal preference settings once it's bled, I think is the way we, we'd say to go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Ty Tankard says, uh, most underrated and overrated pieces of tech. Oh, this feels like a tech show topic, but let's do it anyway. Okay. Right, definitely, I've written overrated carbon bars. What are you saying? You disagree with me on this, don't you? I think there's a couple of angles with that. Uh, why, are they, why do you think overrated? Um, I mean, I'm coming from a trail enduro angle, and I think that carbon bars are less comfortable for me. I get a lot of fatigue in my upper body, so I think it's an overrated upgrade for Enduro and Trail. Um, but then you're enough. an XC yeah, guy, well, so... Just, it's something for, we see an XC, it's quite an easy way, or easy if you can afford, like to just swap out an aluminium bar and stem for carbon. Uh, you can save maybe two, 200 grams quite easily mm. uh, without maybe compromising on the performance aspects yeah, if you had like a light tire or something. cheaper than wheels, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> um, and there's, yeah, lots of different one-piece options available these days. So, yeah. yeah, but underrated, I think saddle width. Like, I think mm. people go for foam and shape and holes and they forget that supporting your sit bones is the most important thing in terms of comfort. So that is the most underrated yeah. bit of take, tech in my opinion. That is smart. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, what you my overrated, I've got the uh, top end shifting and drivetrains. Mm, I think I think if you look after your Dior SLX drivetrain, you just keep it clean, keep it loose, keep it set up well, mm. they just work perfectly and yeah. I would never want XTR yeah. really. You know, yeah, I think I it... Know. Uh, and Even then, on my XC bikes, I've always purchased mid-range and mm, then spent the money on wheels instead because exactly. I think you get yeah, better. Yeah, it makes a bigger difference. Yeah. Um, cool, good question. Though. Underrated, hand-built yeah. wheel sets. I think it's something on the road, you know, that people talk about, especially on the track and stuff, they're talking about, oh, hand builds, hand builds. And I feel like that build quality and balance and spoke tension is probably even more important in mountain bike where you're abusing your wheels. And yeah. it's really worth investing in like finding a good wheel builder, maybe local or something, you're investing in that economy and you get an amazing balanced wheel set. I think it's really worth it. Mm. Yeah, nice one. Uh, who we got next then, Isaac? We have Nick D. Knows. Well, does he? I, it doesn't. <laughs> he's written to us. Uh, when asked GMB and Tech, when should I wash my bike? I'm in SoCal. It's very dry and dusty. I used to wash my bike after every ride, four or five times a week. So he's making the most of his time. But I have gone through two headsets, and I think it's due to wash my bike so often. What are your thoughts? I, you might have a good point there. I obviously you want to keep your bike clean, well set up, and everything. But probably as when you need to. You, you know, like I do in the summer, it is nice to not have to wash it all the time. Maybe just keep your drivetrain from, uh, especially if it's like dusty, that abrasiveness of when it mixes up with the lube and everything. Keep your drivetrain running smoothly, but I wouldn't be doing a full wash all the time. Maybe wipe my frame down, wipe dust away from headset seals and that kind of stuff to stop it working in. But you can definitely overwash stuff. Yeah, I don't know for what sure. you think. I, yeah, no, yeah. I agree. Um, because you've said it's a dusty location, it could, and you've gone through two headsets in a short period of time. It could be because you've got a load of dust in there and it's mixing mm -hmm. with the grease and wearing out your headset. Or it could be that you're washing it so often that you're washing out the grease and they're wearing through as well. Or um, yeah, it could it could be a number of things. Um, I don't think you need to wash that often. Um, maybe try like. Um, a cleaning product that is for dry cleaning. There are dust specific ones out there that don't yeah, require washing. And if you're using a jet wash, that's probably gonna like speed up the whole, you know, flushing out grease process yeah. as well. So maybe lay off that too. Um, so Hugh MP says, how do you decide on bar width? 
Oh, big questions here mm. today. Um, that is a big question. I think style, uh, body and fit um, is obviously a contributing factor and discipline as well. So if you are an XC rider, you'll tend to go towards a shorter bar, um, maybe like 680, 740 in the region um, because you get a good strong frame for climbing and it's very nippy and nimble, mm. I would say. Downhillers tend to go for around about 800 mil, um, regardless of body size and geometry, to be honest. But the leverage is good for them and it tends to be more stable at speed, typically. And then enduro tends to be somewhere in the middle, around about 760. And a lot of EWS or EDR, sorry, um, races tend to be around that number, regardless of their height as well. But I think they're just sort of weaving through trees and it tends to be slightly more important. Um, in terms of picking one for yourself, it's going to incorporate those three factors. And I would head over to a video that I did um, a couple of months ago. I'll leave the link in the description below where I do go into choosing the right width and also rise and sweep as well. So if you want more detail, check that one out. So, final question here from Nicholas Mezzamum, who says, does all full suspension bikes uh, compatible to coil? What exactly makes them be non-compatible? Okay, so even if you find the right fitment where uh, on a coil that can fit to your frame, even if you find that, you might find that some full suspension rear kinematics won't be compatible with a coil. Now, all suspension kinematics in the rear are slightly different you've got ones that are rearward axle paths you've got ones that are linear ones that are progressive and those main two ones progressive and linear is what you're considering here um, so progressive is where it slightly ramps up the force required to move the suspension in the back and linear means that it's consistent the whole way through and it doesn't ramp up coil is very similar it is very consistent it doesn't ramp up much like an air shock would ramp up as well as the air particles start to compress which means that if you paired a linear coil with a linear rear suspension you could potentially just be blowing through all your travel way too easily no ramp up and you could bottom out a lot so that's why some frames are not compatible and hopefully that answers simple. the question. Yeah. Simple, <laughs> although not simple. But thank you anyway for your questions. And if you have any burning questions now, then use hashtag AskGMBNTech down in the comments now, and we'll try and pick it up on a future show. But for now, thank you for watching. Bye.